Hello everyone and welcome to my long-awaited, I feel like now, review on two out of the three Sephora Pro palettes. It's not that I've been putting the review off or anything, I just have been wanting to make sure that, you know, I've got all of my thoughts and everything together and I can give you guys an actual, not just first impression review, you know? That's what I like to give you guys in these eye palette reviews, especially when they are as expensive as these are. I want you guys to know if you're going to be spending your money in a place where it's going to be well deserved. And I would say for the two that I have, I've got the Cool and the Editorial. You guys, these are awesome eyeshadow palettes. They definitely have their downfalls. They're not perfect, but I really have been enjoying these. So to start off, Sephora, basically, you know, they've got their Sephora collection of just their brand of makeup. For these palettes, they came out with three of them. They've got the Cool, the Editorial, and then they've also got a Warm one. I didn't get the Warm one because I feel like I have so many warm tone palettes, like it just, it seemed excessive. But I was really excited because the editorial and the cool one, like these are ones that I feel like I haven't seen before, you know, like these kinds of collection of colors, or at least it's been a very long time. So these really excited me. These are $68 a piece. So like I said, they are pricey. However, you are getting 28 shades in each one of the palettes and you're getting 33.6 grams in each one of the palettes. So you're getting a really, really good value, even though they are $68 a peach, a peach, a piece, which is, you know, a lot more than like a naked palette or something, but you're getting a lot more shadows, you're getting a lot more product in the palettes, and all together with the cost and the grams and everything, you're only paying $2.02 .02 per gram on each one of these palettes. That's incredible, you know, that is less than Urban Decay, that's less than Tarte, that's less than pretty much any other brand, at least that I've reviewed, that you can get at Sephora. So even though you're paying a high price tag, you're getting a ton of product, and the actual palettes are so nice. They're super sturdy, they're all black, and they're not too thick, you know, I think they're a good thickness, and they're heavy. They're really heavy. <laughs> not, I mean, it's not like you're gonna get a sore arm from holding these up or anything, but like they feel really good in the hand. And each one, it's got a different type of metallic for the labeling. So this one is the cool palette. And then the editorial has a more colorful one. I'm not sure what the warm one has, maybe a gold since this one is the silver, but it's got a magnetic closure and it's a nice strong magnet. You don't have to worry about this popping open or anything. It's got a huge mirror in here, really beautiful beautiful. It does not have the shades written on the palette, which I always appreciate, but I do think a lot of that just comes from the fact that I make YouTube videos, so I like having the shade names. To any normal person, I'm sure that really doesn't make a difference. I mean, you guys can let me know, but it did come with like one of those plastic sheets or whatever that comes over it, and then it has the names of all the shadows. I personally just cut out the cardboard backing on this, like, you know, the box that it came in. It came with the shade names written on the cardboard on the back, so I just cut this out and I just throw it in here. You know, it's easy enough for me. I could, I'll probably end up actually, eh, I don't know that I want to tape it on the back because I like to be able to say, I don't know, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> for the most part when I've been using it I just kind of like prop the card in the mirror there but like I said I know that's not really a concern for most normal people out there but the shadows here's the cool palette you guys it's really beautiful I think they did a great job curating the shades apparently on these palettes the three palettes that they came out with a group of 15 Sephora pro artists I guess they're called I don't really know like what their actual job is or anything but they apparently got together and they made these three palettes they came out with the colors that they loved the best and that's what ended up making the palettes. I thought at first when I first read that it was just on the editorial one which all of the well not all of the colors but a lot of the colors in here are named after people so I was like oh maybe they named them after their favorite shade in this palette but then no apparently all of the palettes were made by these 15 people and there's 17 people names in here so I have no idea who these are named after or what they're named after but these ones in the editorial do have names attached to them. Now, one of my shadows did come broken. I think if it was any color other than this silver one, I probably would have sent it back for a replacement. But since that's not a color that I use very often, I just kind of like mushed it back in. But you know, that was a little disappointing. Otherwise, you know, these did come wrapped in bubble wrap and very nicely packaged by Sephora like always. And each one of these palettes, I will show these twice and then repeat it twice. But the cool palette, like I said before, it comes with 28 different shadows. They have got chrome, matte, 
shimmer and satin finishes in here. And then again in the editorial palette as well as the warm palette, it comes with 28 shades and it comes with different finishes. They've got chrome, matte, shimmer, and satin in here. So you get a ton of different stuff you can choose from in terms of what kind of finishes you want with your eyeshadows. And then the quality of these. The quality is really, really nice, you guys. There are definitely some differences between the palettes. I think a lot of that has to do with the colors because these ones are really bright and vibrant in the editorial palette. And they do have some... I don't know, they, they don't swatch the greatest, some of them, but they do apply very well to the eyes, and for me, like, that's what matters, you know? That's what matters in the long run and everything, because that's what I'm using these for, you know, as eyeshadows. I have exclusively the cool palette on my eyes today, but for the tutorials, I did one that was exclusively cool, exclusively editorial, and then also one that used both palettes. But with these shadows, I think you're gonna see in the swatches especially, a lot of them have, like, that buttery where like almost when you go and rub your finger in it it leaves your fingerprint indent in it and that means when you put your brush in it it's got a lot of powdery kickback and everything so that is a little bit annoying but it's not anywhere near as bad as like the Anastasia subculture palette like not anywhere as near bad as that however it does happen so just be really cognizant when you're using these shadows to tap off your brush and I haven't had really hardly any problem with fallout if I just remembered tap off my brush really well. And a lot of these electric shades in the editorial palette, they are sheerer, but they can be built up, which is something I appreciate because I am a newbie to using these kinds of shadows or these kind of colors. They're very bright, but they're not so pigmented where it's like you put it on and it's so overpowering and you don't know what to do. I like that it's buildable because that way I can do a softer type of a look even though I am using these electric shades. The glitters I definitely find are best when applied with the finger. You just kind of pat them on and I think they look really beautiful. They're not like opaque glitters. They're just kind of like that overspray finish. But I think you can build them up decently and that's for both of these palettes really. I think these shades up top really remind me of that one, um, what's it called? I can't, is it called the Alchemist? I don't feel like that's the, what it's called, but the Kat Von D highlighting thing where it, it comes in the like triangular packaging or whatever, these colors really remind me of those highlighters. I don't personally have that palette, but they've got that iridescence to them and everything. So if you've been looking for not necessarily a dupe, but like you didn't want to buy the palette, but you want this eyeshadow palette, you might have found your little dupes. I'm not completely sure, but I think all of these colors play really well together. I do think that this palette is more of like a supplemental palette palette. I mean, sure, you totally can make one look out of just these shades, but for me personally, if you do go for more, like, everyday type looks, you know, it is hard to make a complete look just with that palette. This cool palette, though, you guys, oh my gosh. This is so good. <laughs> like, I love this palette. Now, you can see, I used this shade today in my eyeshadow look, and there is a lot of powder there. But, you know, I just kind of close the palette and save it for next time type of a thing. All of these shadows are so good. They play so beautifully with each other, you guys, and you can come up with so many good looks. I mean, you have to like pinks and purples if you want to get this palette, and obviously you need to like cool shadow colors. However, that being said, if you do like those types of things, Oh, you are gonna love this palette. It's so beautiful, you guys. Like, this, I feel like, is what so many people have been waiting for. You know, we're sick of all of the warm-toned palettes, and we want to play with some cool colors. This is your palette, if you've been feeling that way. It is so good. And I know a lot of people don't like pinky shadows, or they're, like, scared of them, but I think you can really make them work. Like, I feel like I was able to make them work. I don't feel like I look like I have pink eye. You know, it can be done. I just think it takes some, uh, I don't know that finesse is the right word, but just like knowing where to put the pinks, right? And using them more as like pops rather than the full eyeshadow look. I mean, you totally can do that too, but I think, you know, they give you plenty of browns and stuff in here and like slates that you don't have to worry about using only pinks in this palette. You can make so many looks with this, be them like soft, everyday type looks. You can glam it up for night. You can go super smoky with some of these shadows like this is perfect for the pretty pretty princesses out there. You know you've got your day job, you like going out to coffee with friends, you like to go out and get drinks at night, like this is just, I mean anyone, anyone can love this palette. I really do feel that way. This palette is so good. 
I love it. I would recommend it to anybody. The editorial is definitely more for people who like to play with color. I think that's pretty obvious when you look at this. Or if you've just been looking for a palette that's kind of like supplemental to your other palettes, because I kind of feel that way. You know, we have so many neutral palettes out there that we get bombarded with, especially now that we're going into the holiday season. And sometimes it's like, that's great. I love doing my neutral looks on the top of my lids, but then I like to have those bright colors to play with on the lower lash line. That's, you know, what I wanted to buy this palette for mainly. I mean, A, I wanted to like kind of step up my game and play more with the colorful stuff, but I also wanted this just for those days where I'm like, I just want that one color for underneath my lower lash line, and this gives me that. It's got, you know, any color in the rainbow that I want bright under my lash line, it's in here. I love the duo chromes in here, and just like any of the chrome metallic shades, they're so good, they're so soft, and just really good, really easy to put on the lid. And like I said, these are just really, really good palettes. I would highly recommend them. I've been loving playing with them. I'm sad to put them away and move on to my next eyeshadows to play with so that I can do another eyeshadow palette review for you guys. But yeah, I'm sure you're sick of hearing me talking, so let's move on into the swatches and the tutorials so that you can see how these do on the skin and on the eyes and all of that. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I will see you all at the very end of the video. So here we go.
Hello everyone! First little tutorial here for you guys. I haven't even opened this yet, so you guys have already seen swatches, but I haven't even taken this out of the cardboard yet, so I'm very excited. The case is very nice. Oh, I love that magnet. <laughs> I love this big mirror. I'm kind of mad that the shade names are on this, but you know, at least they're on something. But oh, look at that hat! So to start off, like usual, I'm going to go ahead and prime my eyes. Zoom you in for this. And I'm going to use my Painterly Paint Pot from MAC just to even out my eyelid color, get rid of any veining, and just further, you know, further prime my oily lids, give the shadow something to stick to. more zoomed in. I'm going to start off by taking a latte here and I'm just going to tap a flat shader brush in there and I'm going to apply this all over the lid. I mean you can definitely see that that's got pigment to it. It's taking away the pinkness of painterly like you can see the difference between those. So that's good that even one of these lighter shades has a good amount of pigment going on really nice and smooth. Oh Sephora, this is a good start. And then I'm going to take the color right next door, it's called Flax, and I'm going to get this on a contour brush and define the crease. Ooh, I'm liking it, I'm liking it. Define that even more. I'm gonna take this kind of a cool umber color here. They call this espresso. I'm just using the same brush as previously and tapping into that lightly. Just putting that on the very outside part, blending it in. just to like further smoke and blend all that together I'm gonna take this shade right here it's called mushroom and I'm gonna lightly tap a fluffy blending brush in that and I'm just gonna zhuzh all of this together god those have such a nice smooth blend to them do you see that it's just it's really really effortless Like taking it from this to this took no effort or time at all, I feel like. Now I'm just going to take kind of a tapered shading brush and dip this into sketch. Place this on the outer portion of the eye, so kind of on the outer thirds, and then just blending inward a bit. And by a bit, I mean about halfway. I love how dimensional that is in the sense that it was able to like fade so nicely. Dang, dude. And I'm just gonna lightly tap my finger into this shade. It's called Tool. Not like, oh, that guy's such a tool, but like the tool fabric. Dab this onto the centers of my lid and kind of blend it both ways. I'm gonna take a fluffy tapered brush and dip it into this shade here called Fog. I'm gonna blend this on the lower lash line. I don't know why that took me so long to say. liner brush and dip it into obsidian. Ooh, this one's looking a little a little powdery. Let's see how this does. I just wanted to 
smudge this along my upper lash line. Instead of doing an ink liner, I wanted to do something a bit softer. I'm just gonna take another tapered fluffy brush here, dip it very lightly into obsidian, tap off excess. I'm just gonna kind of connect where that liner ended and just kind of smoke that a little bit upwards into the crease. You see what I did there? I don't really know how to explain it very well. It's a very subtle thing that we're doing here. See, even though it's subtle, it's still a difference. And then of course, I've gotta highlight my inner corners, so I'm taking this kind of a peachy highlight shade called Seashell. And there we go, there's the finished look. I just put some nude liner in my waterline and put on some mascara. I think it turned out nice. I mean, everything blended together really, really nicely. This is like one of those looks that's smoky, but still definitely daytime. But it's very, very soft, very blendy, very just, I like it. It's subtle, but it still brings definition to the eyes and everything and just, yeah. I, I don't hate the way that this looks. I actually quite like it. Hello, welcome to this next tutorial here. I'll get you zoomed in. Boop, 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 boop. To start, I'm just gonna use my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. I already did prime my lids, and for this look, since it's gonna be a bit brighter, I wanna really give the shadow a good bright base to stand out against. To start off, I'm going to go into this cool palette and I'm going to use this shade Heather Gray. I'm just using a fluffy blending brush and just very lightly tapping into this one. This one looks like it is quite powdery. So definitely be sure to knock all of that extra off. And I'm just going to be putting this in the crease. There's my crease color. <sighs> what do you think that was? What a fun guessing game when you have cats, huh? Now I'm gonna go in with Hector E. I don't know, it's this really nice orangey, coppery, bronzy color. Tap off any excess. Placing this on the outer half of my eye. And I know you're probably thinking, Cassie, the clashing of those colors though. Don't worry, it'll all come together in the end, I hope. <laughs> I'm using a flat shader brush to pick up, what is this called, Wendy G. It looks like a really bright, sunshiny, yellowy gold kind of a color. Ooh. I'm, just, I'm concentrating the pigment on the inner half, and then I'm just using whatever excess is on my brush and blending it into the previous shadow right where the two shadows meet to give it a nice little gradient. Now to hopefully bring things semi together, I'm gonna go ahead and use the same fluffy brush from earlier and dip it into hot chocolate here. This chocolate makes everything better, right? Be it through the mouth, be it on your eyes. All right, this one looks like a very powdery one as well. Can you see that? Come on, focus. Yeah, and I'm just gonna concentrate this on the outside. Kind of like dabbing it circularly almost. 
or like using the circular shape of the brush as a little stamp. And then I'm lightly feathering that in to mix with that mauve purpley color from before. So it's just kind of mixing the warm of this hot chocolate color and then the cool of that mauve and it's kind of, you know, neutralizing it in a sense. There, so I just really worked that color upwards towards the brow bone. You guys are always encouraging me to, you know, use more of my lid space, so here I am trying for ya. And for a little bit of fun, I'm gonna go ahead and take Jeffrey here. It's this bright lime green color. Go ahead and line my lower lash line with it. Maybe if it shows up. I don't know, we might have to abort mission on this one, you guys. It's just, it's very powdery and I feel like it's hard to pick up on the brush here. Can you see all that? Come on, focus. Yeah. I mean, it's showing up a little bit. It's just, sorry, my phone is going off, you guys. So I was able to make that show up at least a little bit there. Now I'm just gonna go in with David down here Oops. with a tapered fluffy brush. This just looks like a metallic olive-y kind of a color. I'm hoping it'll play well with this lime green. I'm just gonna kinda milk this out here. There we go, that definitely amped that color up. Exactly how I was hoping. So to finish things up, I'm gonna take porcelain here, and I'm just very lightly gonna be putting this on the inner corner just to brighten up that area. And also, I'm gonna be layering some on top of this. So I just wanna make sure it's really gonna stand out, so I figure I'll put the white down. Great, and then using the same brush, I'm gonna go into rose quartz here, and I'm going to be patting this on top of the white. Yay, that did exactly what I wanted. Alright, and here is the finished look. I'm so sad I botched this line. I blinked when I was putting on my liquid liner, and I just kind of was hoping that my lashes would blend in with the <laughs> with the oopsie, so please excuse that. But overall, I'm really happy with the way that this look turned out. It's really bright, it's really fun, it's very summer. So overall, to finish things up, I just, you know, did liquid liner on top, mascara, and then also used like a jade green pencil liner in my water. I think the colors all blended together beautifully. They look great together, even though, you know, I was using the two separate palettes. And yeah, here we go. Yay! It's something a little different, but I really like it. Alright, hello everyone, time for my third and final look. I am going to be trying my darndest to use purely the editorial palette. This is going to be a challenge for me, but challenge accepted. You know, I already did one with just the cool palette, I did a tutorial with both palettes, now let's focus on the editorial. So to start off, as always, I'm going to go ahead and prime my lids. Did you hear my voice crack? It's like, just the thought of not priming my lids. I got scared. <laughs> And then I'm gonna use a base. I'm using one of my milk pigments. This is in the shade Jam Room. I'm thinking this is gonna be a good color to pair with what I'm thinking about. I guess we'll uh, we'll find out together. It's just a really pretty kind of like silvery iridescent lilac. I really really love the color of this base. So you guys are always asking me to play more with color, so that's why I got this palette. I'm going to start off with Electric Violet, and I'm just going to lightly dip a fluffy crease brush in that. I'm so scared, but I'm excited. And I'm just going to lightly 
work this into the crease. So, okay, I'm glad to see, you know, a little goes away. Wouldn't say it goes a long way, but for that, I am grateful with these kind of colors. So this way we can just kind of lightly build it up and hopefully eventually get it to where we want it to be. flat shader brush and go into Chris here. This is a really nice electric blue. I'm just gonna place this kind of, you know, on the outer third of the lid, I guess. And then I'm just working it a little bit into the crease. into Dina with the exact same brush. It's basically the same color as Chris. At least it looks that way to me, except it's got a sheen to it. So I'm just gonna place this directly on top of where I had put Chris. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it's not really doing too much. <laughs> oh well, give it a shot anyways. I mean, it looks like it gave a little bit of shine, but nothing crazy. And then to deepen this up more, I'm gonna go in with Addy, Audi? I don't know, all of these names, or most of the names in this palette seem to be people names. I don't know who these people are. I haven't really looked into it, but I'm just gonna pop this on the outer corner and then work it up into that crease purple color. And I just kind of made like a little wing type shape with that as well. Accentuated. I mean, if I'm gonna go all out, let's go all out, am I right? I know some of you are probably like, Cassie, this is not all, all out. Mm, for me. <laughs> so now with the fluffy brush from before, I'm gonna dip into Maisha? I don't know, is that how you pronounce it? And I'm just gonna feather this on top of where we just were to bring back some of that magenta hot pinkness and also just to get rid of harsh edges and all that. galaxy vibes and vision, maybe? <laughs> oh, you guys, I'm trying. Now are you ready for the glitter? We're gonna go in with ice right over here. I'm gonna try this without wetting my brush. I don't know if it's gonna work. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. It's like, it's not too intense, but I mean, it's intense. You know what I'm saying? I like that it's like a, a little sprinkling of stars. Alright, so I'm kind of sort of really into that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm digging it. And now I'm just gonna clean things up a little bit with some micellar water and a Q-tip. Just wanna get this edge crispy. Yeah, see what I'm doing there? I don't know, I could've should've would've used like tape or something in the beginning, but like I always say, if 
like people always say, hindsight is 2020. You can also see there's a ton of glitter fallout under my eyes, but honestly, I don't know that my cellar water is gonna be the best choice for that. I think I'm just gonna try and get rid of it with a fan brush. Yeah, see that? Nice and sharp. Sad blob. someone with those edges. <laughs> now to make this even more space galaxy like, I'm gonna go into Ilda, is that how you pronounce it? With a smudgy little pencil brush here. Really make sure to tap that one off. Although I wish when you tapped it off the glitter would stay, but oh well. So I'm just gonna smudge this along the lower lash line but kind of trying to keep it tight to the lash line, you know what I mean? And then with a tapered fluffy brush, I'm gonna go in with this teal. Yes, I know. And I'm just gonna smoke this out. got to do my inner corner highlight so like before I'm just gonna take a small brush here and dip it into the white very lightly just kind of place this in the very inner corners but then to be like extra space princessy I'm gonna put the white just very lightly underneath the brow bone as well really kind of like concentrating the color right up against the uh, hairline of the brow and then I'm just gracefully feathering that downward a bit so it's got a nice fade to it. And then with the same brush I'm going to go into the kind of iridescent periwinkle shade. It's called Moonstone. I very liberally coated my brush with that and I'm going to be placing it on top wherever I put the white just so we can get that iridescent kind of spacey looking moon glow. And there you have it, folks. I'm actually really happy. I did not think I was gonna be able to come up with a complete look with just the editorial palette. As you can see, I just finished it off really simply with some black liner in my waterline and then like a nice thick black matte wing up top and obviously mascara. I think it turned out really cool. I'm really happy with the kind of like galaxy space princess type vibe. And yeah, I just think it looks really nice. The colors blended out really great and blended together really great. And I like it. <laughs> Alright, there you have it, you guys. There's all my tutorials and swatches and all that good stuff. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you in seeing whether or not you're going to want to get these Sephora Pro palettes for yourself. Like I said, I personally have really, really been enjoying them. I feel like, you know, even though they're, you know, about 70 bucks with tax and everything, a little over that, I personally feel like my money was well spent. I can see myself reaching for these palettes so often. They're just, they're beautiful. They go on lovely. They last all day. I just... I don't know that words can express how much I've been enjoying these palettes. I think they're really, really great. I think Sephora did a fantastic job with them. And like I said, I just hope it was helpful for you guys in seeing whether or not they're going to be something that you want to add to your collection here. So if you did enjoy the video, found it helpful, whatever the case may be, please do go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you're new here, Hey, hi, hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more content from me in the future. You can become a member of my casserole family here on my channel. I would love to have you here. And as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well. And until next time, just stay well until then. Bye!